Hi everyone, hope you can see and hear me okay. It's Vicky here from The Fashion Business Coach bringing you our monthly IGTV live. I'm going to be joined by Natalie in a moment, but before she gets here, let me just tell you a little bit about what's happening today in case you're brand new around here. So I'm Vicky, founder of The Fashion Business Coach, and I help people who are new to the fashion industry to launch and scale successfully. I see Natalie is here already, so feel free to jump on whenever you're ready, Natalie. Lauren's here, hello, lots of people to wave to. Hi everyone, we are live, so if you want to join us, ask a question, anything like that, you are absolutely welcome. So, just getting Natalie joined in now. Um, Natalie is an attorney from the US and she helps um, business owners like us to protect our brands and just to protect all of the hard work that we've put into our brands. So I'm so excited to have you here, Natalie. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, perfect. Absolutely perfect. And you're over on the Pacific coast, is that right? In California, yeah. Oh, very jealous. I've just put my heating on here in England. It is very cold today, which I'm not excited about. <laughs> really feels like falls here. It's the same over here. It may look sunny, but it's actually kind of chilly. <laughs> okay. That makes me feel a little better. <laughs> Thank you. So I'd love to kind of introduce you, and I'm sure you do a much better job than I have of introducing exactly what you do. Um, but I'd love to know a little bit about the kind of things that you specialize in and, and really why law is so important as well. Yeah, totally. So I'm an online business attorney. So I do kind of all things with online entrepreneurs. I primarily work with um, online entrepreneurs that are coaches in all sense of the word. So I uh, work with coaches who are business coaches or spiritual healers, um, those types of things. But I do have like a wide range of people that I work with. I focus on making legal easy for people to understand and easy for people to implement in their business. So providing templates that you can use that are contracts, really easy plug and play kind of fill in stuff, trademarks, copyrights, um, LLCs, um, corporation formation, those types of things. And I really just strive, you know, like I said, to make things easy to understand, easy to implement. Um, you know, that's really my goal is just to, to make legal seem not so scary because it really isn't so scary. <laughs> I know. And I absolutely love that because so many people that I've worked with, they feel really intimidated by law. Um, and actually, side note, I actually nearly became a lawyer myself, but gave it up to pursue fashion. Um, so I do have like a strong interest in it, but it's certainly not something that I give advice on. But so many people come into it with this fear and then almost just kind of procrastinate and put it off and think, oh, it's going to be so expensive to get legal advice. So I love that you have those kind of templates in the plug in and play aspect. So it really means that people don't have to spend a long time thinking about this and stressing about it. You know, you can just think, okay, what do I need? And we can certainly go through that today. And I know you've got some links for us as well with checklists and so on um, so that you can just kind of get past that stage of being almost paralyzed by fear um, and start making a difference because, you know, I don't want to scare everyone, but the, it is really important to have your, your business legally compliant and protect yourself, isn't it? Because you know, I'm sure you'll be able to explain like there's definite downsides to just kind of sweeping this under the carpet and, and pretending it's not a problem or, or a thing that they have to deal with. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So in terms of what we need to be thinking about when we run an online business, is there something in particular that you think is kind of a great starting point to start to address? Yeah, well, I always talk about something called the legal wall. So when okay. people think about legal, they think about like layers of a cake, right? Or stories of a house. They, there's like a base that you have to start at and then you do this and then you do this, right? Like they think that there's kind of like a ladder in terms of how you set up your legal. But I really want to encourage people to think of legal more like, like different sections of a wall that's protecting yourself and your business. So you have your business entity formation, which is your LLCs, your corporations, your incorporations, right, depending on where you are. And that's going to be protecting yourself and your business assets from your creditors. Then you have your contracts, which is your interactions with your clients and your customers. Then you have your trademarks and copyrights, which is protecting your intellectual property. So when it comes to, you know, those first steps in business, there isn't really the first step that really isn't like the right thing to do in terms of that okay. first step. It really is just finding where your comfort level is, finding what makes sense financially 
So obviously, you know, something like a template is going to be more inexpensive than doing something like a trademark. Absolutely. And finding also what's going to speak to you. You know what I mean? If you're creating a brand and you are really hesitant to move forward in it because you're worried about someone stealing your name, then maybe trademarks are the way that you want to go, mm -hmm. right? Maybe there's where you want to start. So really figuring out where your priorities are in your business and allocating money to that, not being scared to not undertake the legal because we're all really confused about what it means and where to start and all those things, but yeah. really setting aside some of that investment capital, some of that initial capital to just figuring out where you can plug some money into your legal. And then as your business grows, your legal is going to grow and Absolutely. it's ever evolving. It's always going to be expanding. I still revise my contracts once a year, every single year. And I'm okay. an attorney. So, right. Like you're always going to want to be expanding on the legal side of your business. So figure out what makes sense for you financially and figure out what's more in line with you and your business. And that's kind of where you want to start. I love that. And I think it's really important for people to know that you don't have to do like everything today or before you start, like it doesn't have to be this kind of big barrier before you actually start your business. There are things that you can expand on as you go. There are things that don't have to be done immediately. Um, and just, I know we've got a few people in the comments from the UK. If you are in the UK, the LLC, um, that Natalie was just talking about, we call it a limited company. Um, there's actually a ton of government, um, things that you can get on our online website, the UK government website, just for our UK folks. Um, but basically the, the, the essential points that Natalie was just mentioning are the same for us as well. Um, just that way of protecting your business and essentially, not you personally being the kind of the go-to for any creditors, any debts, anything like that, should something bad happen in your business. Right. Same, same here. That's exactly what the whole yeah. point of becoming an LLC or a corporation is. Exactly. Right? Sheltering. Yeah. Yeah. And just that bit of protection for you as the business owner that you're personal, particularly if you're somebody that's watching this and you've maybe purchased a house or something like that, you know, it just protects that asset, that house that you've got. Um, if something bad were to happen with the business side of things. Yeah, exactly. And I know you mentioned trademarks there and that's a question I get asked all the time. Of course I can't answer it cause I'm not a lawyer. Um, so for anybody who's not really, you know, they've heard the word trademark, but they're not really sure what that kind of incorporates. How would you kind of explain that to them? Sure. So a trademark is going to be protecting any name, logo, slogan, or catchphrase in your business. And that could be a business name, a podcast name, a course name, a signature method name, right? Anything like that. Any name that you're using in your business can be protected by a trademark. And a lot of people have a misconception about that trademark name, right? Like, so if they see, let's say, um, you know, you have a trademarked name and you see something that's similar, do you have to trademark every single variation of the name that you want? And the answer, at least in the U.S., is no. And again, I'm in California, okay. so I can only speak on U.S. law when it comes to trademarks, but most countries are generally the same when it comes to this. Mm -hmm. um, so you can trademark a name, and what happens is you're essentially trademarking anything that's substantially similar to the name that you want to use. Okay. So that's really going to protect your brand in terms of preventing brand dilution, right? If you had a bunch of companies that had a name that was either the same or substantially similar, where it might confuse a consumer, right? Mm -hmm. That is going to make your brand diluted because people are going to look and say, you know, are, is, is this person, you know, the fashion business coach or is this person the fashion mm -hmm. business coach is, right? Like they're going to be confused between the different names, um, and that's essentially what a trademark does. It's going to pre prevent that from happening so that you can protect your brand and you can really make it so that you're the one that's standing out with a particular name or a variation of that name. And I think that is something that is, for me personally, I do find that important to think about because you don't want to choose a name that then you're going to run into trouble with later on. And I do always advise people to check whether there's something similar, um, both on the side of the name itself, but also the logo, because I have worked with a few people who didn't do that. They kind of went in, just wanted to rush through things, didn't check if the name was actually already in use. And there was something very, very similar. And they actually got letters from that company's lawyer saying, hey, this is too similar. We don't want you to use it and then they had to go through quite an expensive rebranding process so it's definitely something to you know for one to think about the the trademarking itself but also to make sure you're checking is there somebody else already out there who's potentially going to be unhappy that i'm using a similar name right exactly and i always tell people the same you know 
you don't have to hire an attorney to do a Google search, right? You don't have to no, pay anyone exactly. to do that. You can do a simple Google search, see if something pops up, if it's similar. If it's similar, just find something else, right? Like, like I said, you don't have to pay for an attorney to, to tell you that you can't use that name. Um, and I really encourage people to do that at the onset. You know, I've had a lot of clients that have come to me and said, okay, I've been in business for three, five years, and now I want to go ahead and trademark this name. And we go through the process and find out that it, in fact, is being used by a different company and it cannot be trademarked. Um, and like you said, there's cost there for rebranding. There's a law that yeah. passed in California last year under the quiet of COVID. The Supreme Court heard a case and passed a law that says that you can be sued for trademark infringement, even if you didn't know that there was another trademark that existed. Wow. So you really do yeah. have to do your research. Right, exactly. So, you know, you easily could just be, you know, going on your merry way with your business and then, mm -hmm. you know, you get sued just because you didn't look right. And, and a lot of people mm -hmm. say, well, it's a defense. Like I, I didn't know. I had no idea. Yeah. That's not a defense anymore um, as of last year. So you really have to be careful with that. So it really is one of those things, you know, if, if you don't have it in your budget to hire an attorney such as myself to do trademark for you, do a Google search. You can always go to our um, U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. It's USPTO.gov and do a trademark search in there as well. Um, but really, it's one of those things that, that people should really think about early on in their businesses. Yeah. And you don't have to be using the name in order to apply for a trademark. It could be something that you're thinking about that you're, that you're planning on doing in the future, right? Like you've got everything like going on in your head. You're thinking yeah. about really implementing it. You can start on a trademark right away for that. So those are really one of the things, um, you know, that I would urge people to, to consider doing right away. Yeah. And as you say, because it is something that is so simple to do, you can just do that search. It's not got to be something that's taken a lot of time and money and it really can pay off in the long run. As I said, that client that paid thousands for their original branding that then had to be paid for thousands again um, to change it because they weren't compliant. Um, I think they were lucky in that the company just ex the company that kind of wanted to sue them. They said, as long as you change it straight out of the way, we're not going to take any further action. So they were lucky in that sense. But, you know, not everyone's going to be that understanding and, and accommodate that. So definitely something to look out for. Um, right. And just again, for people in the UK, the web, the kind of English version of the website Natalie was talking about here is called Companies House, where you can just do a search for um, trademarks and company names that are already being used over here. And kind of on that note, um, I know a lot of our or a lot of my viewers over here are wanting to sell in America. So is it worth having the trademark um, or their name trademarked in the US as well as in the UK? Or does it kind of protect both? No, it doesn't protect both. So they are um, specific to each country. So if you're in Canada, the UK, the United States, as long as you are actively selling on a nationwide level there, then you really should be applying for those trademarks in all of those countries. Um, it doesn't come over. And so you easily could have, you know, a UK name for something and you want to start selling to, you know, more US base and you don't have that trademark or someone here has that trademark, right? You can really run into some issues there. Hmm. Yeah. So if you are a brand and I know a lot of people that I work with are thinking globally, which is great so you can get those orders from around the world. You do have to have that added consideration of, well, I've trademarked and registered my business in the UK. What do I need to be doing in the US or vice versa? Um, so do think if you want to sell globally about thinking about your legal side of things globally as well. Right. Exactly. Um, we've talked about quite a few things already, but I'm sure there's questions that I don't even know to ask, not being a lawyer. So is there something or like one tip in particular that you think is important for people who are either a new or a small business to think about before they start selling online? Yeah. So first and foremost, don't be scared to engage with an attorney to get your legal done. And trust me, it is way more affordable than you would ever think. I have all of my templates on a payment plan. My trademarks are on a payment plan. So you really can find something that's affordable in your business. Don't let the cost of it scare you from really getting these things into place. But if you are online, which most of us are selling online mm -hmm. and you have a website, there are required legal documents that you have to have. Your privacy policy is one of them. There are other yeah. documents that I recommend having that I, that I really would have someone have their website go live without it. Um, there are penalties and fines that you can get, um, hit with if you don't have your privacy okay. policy on your website. And this is for the GDPR, which go it's worldwide. Yeah. So, um, and there's obviously other countries that have their own privacy policy laws, but 
Be very, very cautious and careful where you're getting your legal documents for two reasons. Number one, you don't know what you don't know when it comes to legal. So you don't know that it's not legally compliant. Um, Like I said, with something like the privacy policy, if there's not specific legal things that are in there that are required by law, you can still get fined, right? They don't give you credit for trying. You have to have everything specific in there. Um, Plus, if you're taking them from other, you know, businesses or other companies, you don't know that it's missing or that it has those things in there that you need. And then also, you might be infringing on someone else's intellectual property. So be really careful because you might be um, doing something that's highly illegal by just going to someone other other person's website and taking their legal documents. These documents are created by an attorney such as myself. We hold the intellectual property protection from them. So if you are copying and pasting them from someone else and you're not getting permission from the attorney, then you are committing uh, intellectual property, you're, you're violating intellectual property law. So be very, very careful. Then you can get sued for that. I, I know people that have been sued by attorneys for doing that. And then they come to me to get their legal documents. Yeah. Um, so, so be very careful with that. And, and like I said, you don't know what you don't know. So um, you don't know that it's that missing. Saying. Yeah. You don't know that it's not, doesn't have everything in there that you need, or it's missing some key legal documents and, and, and certainly don't give your documents to somebody else. You're doing the same thing. Uh, if you're giving them away without the attorney's permission. So be careful there. Um, You know, and then make sure that you have everything in place that you need to. We need, you know, shipping and returns policies if we are going to be selling online. We need to have our terms of service in place if we're going to be selling physical products online. If you are selling digital products such as courses or, you know, uh, prints or something like that, then you need to have a terms of use in place for a digital product. So, you know, set up a consultation. I do free consultations. If you're here in the US, I'm happy to, to speak with you for free and just let you know what you need. And, and that's kind of the first step. Don't let that sway you because it is so complicated. There are yeah. attorneys out there and we speak normal language. We can talk <laughs> to you in a normal way that you can understand what you need and make it really simple and easy. So, you know, don't be discouraged. And my, my biggest tip is really just to, to find an attorney that's in your space um, that can really speak to you and, and give you some guidance there. And I think it's really important to have an attorney like yourself who is, you know, used to dealing with other online entrepreneurs and you're not going to be, you know, just bombarding people with legal jargon that goes over their heads. So they end up more confused than, than when they started. Um, I've certainly had conversations like that with lawyers where I felt like, you know, I'd book a session or have a call with them to kind of get some clarity. And then I'd end up, you know, thinking, OK, I'm way more confused than I ever was to begin with. Um, so that's really great. We can definitely put the links um, for your um, Um, website and so on so people can find you and the templates and everything um so really happy that we had that conversation and i'm sorry if we scared a few people because i know (laughs) that it's not what you want to hear like being sued because i know so many people will you know just swipe that privacy policy from somewhere else and as you say you don't know where that's come from you don't know if somebody else owns the rights to it if somebody has made a mistake in theirs which then means you have a mistake in yours so these are definitely things and i know it's not why people get into the fashion industry to worry about legal compliance but it is something that we need to be aware of no matter what size your business is as well yeah, exactly. And I have to deal with it on my end too. I'm an attorney. Yeah. And I still have to deal with legal compliance. So we all have yeah. to, it's, it's just part of running business and just becoming more comfortable with it is really important. Mm, absolutely. Um, yeah. And, you know, I think a, a common misconception that I see amongst people I work with, they kind of think, oh, well, you know, I'm a small business, so it doesn't really matter to me. Like when I get bigger, I'll kind of think about that, but it doesn't matter what size business you are. Like the laws apply to, you know, all kinds of businesses. So it's just important to make sure that it is a priority. Right, exactly. And, and in terms of the law as well, when you become a business owner, you're held to a different standard, especially yes, here in the US. So there, there's a different standard that, that the law expects that you know better because you are now a business owner, that if you're going to start a business, you're really going to do the research and make sure that you have all of this in order. So you're right, whether or not you're a small business or, or a big business, it really doesn't matter the law really expects you and holds you to a higher standard to know that you're getting these things in place. So, and as you said earlier, just saying, Oh, I'm new to this. That's not going to cut it. Like you have got to really do your homework and make sure that you're doing everything you need to. Yeah, exactly. Um, one thing I will just circle back to quickly, if you don't mind, was just the GDPR, because mm-hmm. if anybody's not heard of that, 
Um, I thought we could maybe just quickly answer that question because I have heard as well a lot of people thinking, oh, well, I'm in the US, the GDPR is for Europeans, it doesn't affect me. But it is something that everybody needs to be aware of, isn't it? Yeah, and there's actually another Brazilian law that just passed in August of 2020 okay. that applies to everybody worldwide as well. So there's all of these countries that are coming out with their own laws that affect everybody. And really, when you think about it, yes, we aren't, you know, all sitting in the in you know the European Union or in Brazil, right? Mm -hmm. But if you have one person from any one of those places view your website, then you have to be compliant with these laws. Mm -hmm. And you know we kind of sometimes think like, oh, we're we're out of arm's reach, right? Like who from mm -hmm. Brazil is really going to sue us or or give me a penalty or fine? But it does happen, so it is you know there is some caution there when it comes to that. But the GDPR basically and the privacy policy basically is a a regulatory way to let people know the type of data that you're collecting when they visit your website. Mm -hmm. And even if you have a standalone website that just has an image on it that says coming soon, you're still collecting IP addresses, which is a data locator. It shows where exactly people are viewing your website from. Yep. So you can go into the back end, take a look and say, oh, you know, 50 people from California saw my website today and 200 people from the UK, right? So it's locating where they are. And that is considered to be personal data. So you are collecting personal data, even if you have a live website that doesn't have anything on it, which means in turn that you have to have a privacy policy on your website, especially if you have something like a newsletter that they can opt into, right? If you're taking yeah, payments absolutely. from your website, that's all privacy policy information and you need to have a privacy policy on the front of your site if you have any of that going on. And I think there's always been a bit of confusion because when it says private data, you know, or personal data, people think, oh, well, it must be like someone's name and address and phone number, but actually any kind of tracking that you have. And it becomes difficult because most softwares these days or most website providers that you might use as kind of a builder, they automatically have that tracking mm -hmm. in there. And it's amazing for us as business owners, like to have that data, but then it does mean that we do have to fall into that GDPR. Um, those of yeah. you in the UK, you do have to pay some money to a company that if you want to know I'll look it up for you and you can send me a DM and I'll find the details but I have to pay I think about 50 pounds a year to some sort of GDPR compliance body so we're basically as business owners paying for them to find us if we're not GDPR compliant which is a weird thing that we have to do as business owners yeah yeah I mean the basic good rule of thumb is if you have a website and it's live and other people can view it then make sure you have your privacy policy on there Absolutely. Yeah, 100%. Um, I know that you've got quite a few links for us. So if there's any in particular that you want to talk through. And I also wanted to shout out to Lauren, who I know some of you know, she's my social media manager. And it was Lauren who put um, Natalie and I in touch because she raves about your podcast. Yeah. Um, so I'm definitely going to put the links to that um, in the um, when I post the replay. Sorry, I'll put that in the comments. Um, but is there anything else that you wanted to highlight? I know we've got quite a few good links of yours. And it's a checklist and a masterclass, I believe that we were going yeah. to do. Yeah, so I have um, my podcast. It's called the Legal Babe Podcast. Um, I've actually taken a longer hiatus than I wanted to because I, I had a baby in July. And oh, I amazing. Just, Congratulations. Thank you. thank you. Yeah, and I've just kind of stopped recording for a little bit of time. Um, but there are still every single episode is really, you know, valuable and they're quick and bite-sized. I'm not going to bore you with <laughs> legal for an hour long, Love it. <laughs> uh, hour long episode. They're all like 20 ish minutes and you can just play them in the car and listen to them and, and just kind of get what you need. And, and it's nice too, cause you can use it as a library and just go through and find exactly what you want to know about and just listen to that episode, which is great. Um, if you guys follow me on Instagram, that's a really, really wonderful resource too. I'm kind of, I consider myself to be a no fluff, you know, poster you I, I rarely <laughs> post about private stuff um, I like to keep my family out of you know my page is, is public so I like to keep my family out of it so every single post is save worthy you will get something valuable about every single thing that I talk about which is great um, and then I can definitely um, second that Natalie is definitely worth a follow because it is no fluff like straight to the point action and I love that thank you I appreciate it um, I have a really great uh, trademark checklist that you can get through the link in my bio, as well as just a legal checklist that'll help out. And then there is a masterclass that, um, as you mentioned, I think it's like 40 minutes. It's pretty, um, it's pretty easy, but you get a link to it. So if you sign up for that, um, you know, you can, you can watch it at any point in time. 
And then I, um, like I mentioned earlier, I do free Voxer consultations, which I just started. And it's such a wonderful way to do them rather than hopping on a Zoom call because we can kind yeah. of get as many, you get more of my time. My Zoom calls um, were 20 minutes, but this you get 24 hours access to me to ask me anything you want. Oh, fantastic. Um, and which is also a really wonderful way to do that. So I love Voxer. It's quite new over here, to be honest, or maybe I'm just too old to be up on the trends and I've only just realized it, but I'm obsessed with Voxer since I found out about it. And you're right. It is such a good way because people's schedules are so busy. Trying to get on Zoom calls and things can be difficult. Whereas with Voxer, you can just leave that um, voice memo and it, yeah, things just run a lot smoother with it, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It's been great. If anybody watching has got a question, we just have time for a couple of questions. If anyone has anything um, put into words, commented how great your podcast is and how much it makes legal less scary, which is, I think, so, so important. And yeah, that's why I was actually really keen to do this live with you, because so many people feel really intimidated by law and it doesn't have to be that way. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think potentially we answered all the questions as we went along. But what I can do is say I'm going to post the replay for anybody who's just joined us. I can link to all those amazing resources that Natalie's mentioned. Um, so you can go check those out. Um, and of course, tag you as well. So you can go um, and follow Natalie um, and see her amazing Instagram content as well. I'm um, yeah. so grateful for your time. This has been amazing. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you for having me. And if anyone has any questions, you can also tag me in the comments and I'll come back throughout the day and answer any additional questions so thank oh, you so much for having it. me this is really really great oh you're so welcome thanks so much for your time and um yes um people are saying thank you in the comments i think they appreciated it too my pleasure all right have a great day all Take right care. bye guys bye